What do you know about x-rays? We all know they are used to take pictures of your bones or see the contents of your bag at the airport. But have you ever imagined that a very powerful source of x-rays could also help solve industrial problems and could help speed up your innovation process? Well, yes it can, and the ESRF does this. A wide range of techniques is open to industry at the SRF. Dr. Manfred Birkhammer, Beamline Responsible, will give us an insight into X-ray micro and nano diffraction. Micro and uh, nano diffraction has a wide range of applications in industrial research because it can be applied uh, to soft and hard condensed matter samples equally and it allows to probe multiple length scales in terms of texture, structure or phase composition. Sample sizes can vary from 100 nanometers to 10 centimeters and um, the thickness uh, equally from 50 nanometers to about a millimeter or millimeters. So uh, there are almost no restrictions uh, for uh, typical applications starting from nanotechnology or uh, ceramics industry, food industry, medical applications, environmental science, semiconductor techniques and so on. This list could be really go on for quite a while. Single polymer fiber diffraction is an example for an application in textile industry where structural information can be obtained by scanning across the fiber diameter. Scanning diffraction uh, applications can be uh, uh, useful for semiconductor research and for um, polymer films and there's a possibility to do grazing incidence diffraction in order to obtain information on the surface of the sample. Classical chemical crystallography can be extended to very very small microcrystals uh, using uh, microbeams and microbeam uh, crystal structure analysis. And uh, finally, you can take ordinary powder samples, as they often occur in industry, and uh, take one single grain and examine this grain instead of the whole powder, avoiding averaging effects. Using an ESRF beamline, you can profit from the very high sensitivity and the very high resolution that can be obtained. You will have a very high flux, allowing for very fast data acquisition and uh, a very flexible environment and you can adapt to the chemical position, composition and other parameters of your sample. And uh, you will have all the expertise and experience of ESRF staff assisting you in the air experiment. On this image you can see a sketch of the functional arrangement uh, of the microdiffraction setup. The microdiffraction techniques is based on a, a very small beam, highly focused, 100 nanometers to the order of microns. And uh, you use a heterogeneous samples which you can see in the middle of your view graph, this layered structure. And uh, this structure can be exposed at different positions by a high resolution scanning device to the beam. And like this you can uh, record uh, one diffraction image after the other with a CCD detector and examine the diffraction patterns. As you can for example see at the left uh, on this view graph seeing two diffraction peaks. On this view graph you can see how the micro diffraction techniques can be used to uh, produce raster imaging information. By arranging your sampling points on the beam in a grid-like arrangement you can produce an image composed of diffraction patterns or parameters extracted from diffraction patterns which represent an image of your sample, but in terms of structural parameters. It is possible to combine microdiffraction data acquisition with X-ray fluorescence analysis, and then you can obtain information on the elemental composition of your samples. Furthermore, sample environments are available for in situ analysis uh, using humidity control, elevated temperatures, and microfluidics devices. Small and wide-angle scattering can be recorded simultaneously on one and the same diffraction pattern, which is very useful for polymer research. The option to have high-resolution diffraction is, uh, on the other hand, very interesting for semiconductor research because you can 
uh, resolves structures within Bragg reflections and therefore determine the strain and uh, domain arrangement of small objects on semiconductor surfaces. On the lower right you can see an example of such a reflection recorded with a 200 nanometer beam on a silicon germanium island. Single crystal structure analysis is a problem occurring very often in industry in many fields. But very often only powder samples or very small crystals are available and then laboratory techniques usually fail. Going to a synchrotron like the ESRF and uh, doing microcrystallography, you can obtain single crystal structures down to atomic resolution of very small specimens. On this view graph you can see an example of amylose crystals which has been taken from a powder, as you can see on the upper left, mounted on a single glass fibers and then diffraction patterns have been recorded at 100 Kelvin temperature, avoiding radiation damage as far as possible. And on the upper right you can see the atomic structure which has been obtained by these data sets. The last example shows how scanning diffraction can be used to obtain raster imaging like results, exemplified in this case on a polypropylene uh, spherulite thin section. By doing a scanning diffraction with a 300 nanometer beam and 300 nanometer step size, you can obtain structural information in the form of micrographs, which can then be cor correlated uh, with optical microscopy images. Each of these images is composed of 10,000s of pixels. If you look at the three micrographs at the left and the upper right, you can see that uh, structural features can be resolved at a high, very high level of detail, imaging the break intensity of different peaks of different phases, and therefore re revealing a, a, a lot of information on the sample, which cannot be obtained by optical microscopy. For correlation purposes, you can see such an optical micrograph at the middle right. This uh, uh, information is not accessible in an easy way by any other technique. So you have to come to a synchrotron and the micro focus beamline in order to uh, perform such measurements. This type of investigations can be very important for large-scale industrial applications. If you just think of the example of ordinary plastic bags, which are essentially plastic foils and uh, have to be optimized in the sense of minimum weight, minimum amount of material, but as well maybe biodegradability. So this is a good example where uh, um, this raster scanning technique uh, is uh, maybe very helpful. But it's not constrained to polymer research. You can apply all this to semiconductor, ceramics and other uh, applications. In all these areas you will find uh, most likely uh, useful applications for uh, raster scanning imaging. If you're interested to know more or to find out how the ESRF can help your business, please contact Dr. Edward Mitchell, our Business Development Manager, or visit our website 